Looks like Daddy's bringing home the barbecue. A big sack of McDonald's McRib sandwiches. Looks like Daddy's bringing home the barbecue. An innocuous quote from a McRib commercial that, albeit strange, actually calls to mind Nietzsche's allegory and both the existence and non-existence of metaphysical nihilism. The father picks up a meal from McDonald's, with the family thinking they will be eating together. He holds the McRib, the family knows of the idea of the McRib, so it must be deduced that the McRib is real. But is it really? The family created a perception of reality where father will bring home the barbecue, but is easily disproven. The father instead eats it in his car alone. But if this was shattered, can't our perception of reality be shattered as well? Can there be a world where the McRib and everything else cease to exist? This is the question that philosopher Thomas Baldwin puts forth with his subtraction argument, but a bit more on that later. We all know that nihilism is the idea that nothing has no true purpose and rejects the fundamental aspects of human existence, such as knowledge, morality, or meaning. And the McRib easily disproves nihilism by stating life's true purpose is the McRib. This mundane sandwich symbolizes the humdrum of existence, yet human perception allows us to be a solution to hunger, excitement in life, scraping whatever pennies you have left in your apartment in order to succumb to its mouthwatering element. If we were to stop here, however, this would only prove the existence of existentialism, finding meaning when nothing has no meaning. Existentialism states we have to find our own meaning because there is no true meaning. But what if I were to tell you the McRib just existing is life's true purpose? The simple act of existence, of being, is a source of wonder and awe. There is always potential with any sort of existence, and by embracing the absurdity of the McRib, we can find solace in the absurdity of existence itself. And before you poke any holes at this argument, consider the following. I have really good grades, so your opinion doesn't matter. But metaphysical nihilism takes this a step further, proving that objects itself may not exist, that we may be living in a false reality. Could this really be true? Could the McRib be just a mere illusion and not at all what we think we're experiencing? Its barbecue tanginess, its boneless structure, its undeniable presence within America's capitalistic constitution, could this all just be nothing? It's easy to disprove metaphysical nihilism by saying this could just be a simulation we're all part of a computer program made by something higher than us. So that would mean whatever purpose we have in life is based off the simulation we're running in. But Elon Musk says this, and he's stupid and ugly so we won't say this. Instead, religious views may be the key to answer this theory. And just like the McRib, Jesus Christ died, resurrected, and blessed us with his grace. I'm finding God in this McRib tonight. Let's go back to Thomas Baldwin and his subtraction argument. Here's a simplified breakdown of the argument, but also put into brain rot terms. Finite world. We start with a world containing a finite number of objects. Think of a place with a sigma, a ligma, a figma, and Duke Dennis. Possible worlds. For each object in this world, we can conceive of a possible world where that object does not exist. Take away Sigma, and you still have the remaining yachts. Even removing Duke Dennis, you're left with a place that is Rizless, but still has Aura. There is now a world that has only the two. Iterative Subtraction This process of subtraction can be repeated for every object in the world, leading to a series of possible worlds, each with fewer and fewer objects. Nihilistic Conclusion Eventually, we arrive at a possible world where no objects exist. There is no Sigma, no Ligma, no Figma, no Duke, no Riz, not even Livy Dunn. So subtraction theory says if we can perceive a world with nothing, could that world still exist? Are you still following me here? Here, let me help you out. Unfortunately, Thomas gets absolutely dunked on through my following point. In an atomic level, you could theoretically say that nothing is still something, which some can describe as quantum foam. John Archibald Wheeler, an American physicist at Princeton University, discovered quantum foam in 1955. 
If every particle and non-particle is removed from somewhere, space can briefly fluctuate to non-zero energy. And that temporary energy can make matter and antimatter particles. So in this theory, even if we take everything to try and make nothing, there still is something, a concrete object. And if we peer through at the subatomic level, you can see something that remains a constant and proves there's nothing to be full of. The McRib. It's impossible to think of the McRib as nothing as it permeates our everyday life. Nothing can't exist because the McRib is back. And even if it was discontinued throughout its commercial debut, its return is always inevitable, even if the powers that be try to remove it. Matter and antimatter will always return, and so shall the McRib. But what about when the McRib didn't even exist? There can't have been something from nothing, right? Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 states, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. With God there is always something, and God, through His divine power, brought the universe into existence. And because it's possible that nothing can't exist, the McRib came into existence even before nothing to create something. Without the McRib, we still have something. And that something is the McRib. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done.